Niels Bohr was a Danish Nobel Prize winner in 1922 for his services in the investigation of the structure of atoms and of the radiation emanating from them. He had a brilliant student in the 1920s, Werner Heisenberg, who in 1932 also would win the Nobel Prize. By 1940, Germany had occupied Denmark, but uh, Niels Bohr remained in the country to protect his colleagues and the institute he was working at. 1941, Werner Heisenberg came to Denmark and met with his old mentor and friend, a meeting that would distress Bohr very much. Heisenberg told Bohr it was certain that uh, Germany would win and it was foolish not to collaborate with the Germans. Bohr also understood that Heisenberg was in the process of developing an atomic bomb for the Germans. Niels Bohr's mother, she was Jewish, so a Germany winning the war was not an outcome he wanted to see. Fast forward to 1943. The Allies did not know how far the Germans had got in developing an atomic bomb. They made a list of people in occupied Europe who might know, and at the top of that list was Niels Bohr. MI6 convinced James Chadwick, a friend of Bohr, to write a letter inviting him to come to England. The letter was sent in a microfilm format, first to Sweden and then smuggled to Denmark inside a hollowed out key. Niels Bohr replied in the same way, declining. He still wanted to protect his colleagues and the institute. That autumn, things started to deteriorate. The somewhat autonomous Danish government was dissolved on the 29th of August and martial law declared. Denmark was now under full military occupation, which it had not been before. Then Niels was warned by the Swedish legation that he and his brother were about to be arrested and that they would start rounding up the Danish Jews. An order to arrest him was issued, but on the 29th of September he fled, smuggled by the resistance to Sweden by a boat. In Sweden he met the king, pleading for Sweden to accept all Danish Jews, something that Sweden would do. The Swedish government had already agreed to accept all Jews from both Norway and Denmark, so he probably did not influence their decision that much. But of course it probably helped somewhat. So he had escaped to Sweden, but he was not safe here either. In all honesty, the Swedish authorities were a little bit naive regarding what could happen here. Within a couple of days, it was decided that he should be flown to England. After some aborted attempts, he was loaded into a mosquito plane with civilian markings, laying in the bomb bay area with a too small oxygen mask he did not know how to use. The plane took off, the oxygen mask was not on board, who lost consciousness as the plane gained altitude. And had the pilot not seen and descended, he would have died. However, he made it, landing on the 6th of October 1943 in Scotland. He had a meeting with Churchill that by all accounts did not go that well. He traveled to USA, talked to the scientists that were working on the Manhattan Project. But he did not take any major part in that project. As he said, they did not need him to make the bomb. After the war, he returned to Denmark. 